Hi again, it's Mr. Ray here with our next math lesson in Grade 12 Data Management. We are in the third unit of the course. We're talking about different types of probability distributions. Uh, the first lesson we talked about just probability distributions in general. Um, also talked about the uniform distribution, uh, where every probability is the same. Um, and then last lesson, lesson two, we talked about the binomial distribution, which is basically a distribution based on success or failure. Um, it's a very important distribution. It's used quite often. So, uh, and it is going to be related to today's lesson and, and to uh, lesson four, the final lesson. So um, today we're going to be learning about a new distribution called the geometric distribution. Now this distribution is kind of unique because it is, well, first of all, it's also known as the waiting time or waiting period distribution. Um, it's about how long you have to wait for something to happen. It's not based on how often something happens. It's how long you have to wait for a success or a failure to occur. So it also uh, is, to is totally based on success and failure, just like binomial distribution. Um, but like I just said, it's the um, the random variable is the number of uh, the amount of time you have to wait or number of events you have to wait instead of uh, how, how, how many results you're going to get. Okay. Um, now, it, uh, it comes with its own formula. Uh, but before we look at it, uh, again, it is a lot like the uh, binomial distribution. It's based on independent trials, which means uh, the probabilities don't change over time after you could pick something uh, on your first attempt and you could pick the same thing again on your second attempt. The probabilities do not change. They're independent of each other. So uh, it has that similarity with binomial distribution. And it's also similar in the aspect that there's two outcomes, either success or failure. And like I said, the random variable is the number of unsuccessful outcomes before a successful outcome happens. Okay, so uh, we'll try to get uh, lots of examples in here to make sure you understand. Now, as confusing as it might be, the, the formulas that we use uh, for the probability for this distribution are actually quite simple. Um, and once you understand what we're actually measuring, it, it becomes even more so. So you can see uh, the probability that the, the random variable x has a certain value is equal to q. Remember, q is the probability of failure to the power x, where the, these two x's are exactly the same, um, times p. So you're going to see that the p is what you're trying to get and the probability of that. So you're going to have any number of failures before you get to that. So uh, it's quite unique um, in the way it works. We also have uh, expected value or expectation formula. Um, and that's just the ratio of the um, probability of failure over the probability of, of success. Okay, um, so what I'd like to do uh, before we get to the examples is maybe come up with uh, an example on the first page. So uh, I'm, my example is, our goal is to roll a die uh, until you get a five. So you just keep rolling. You might roll once, you might have to roll a hundred times uh, until you get a five. Okay, now... Uh, uh, so, let me separate that a bit. So a success, a success here would be rolling a five. So on its own, on its own, rolling a five um, has a one in six probability. So that will be our success uh, variable p, probability of succeeding, or in other words, probability of rolling a five. And our q will be everything else, rolling anything else other than a five. Well, there's five out of six where that's going to happen. Again, these two variables added together always equals one. 
Okay, so okay. Now, um, so I'll just remind you what the two formulas are here. Probability of x equal to little x is equal to q to the power of little x times p, and then the expected value ex is equal to q over p. So we've started talking about the random variable already, but we haven't really defined it. Um, remember, it's uh, how many failures happen before we succeed. In other words, how many um, rolls uh, where we don't get a 5 before we get a 5. So basically, number of rolls before you get a 5 is what x represents. And like I said, that could be, you know, it could be, it could be as low as zero. You could roll a five on your first attempt, or it could be, it could be six, it could be 20, it could be a thousand. Um, unlikely, but it's, it's still, still a possibility. Okay, so I just wanted to show you if we we're creating a probability distribution for this. So if I wanted to say, start at the lowest value, it could be a probability that x equals zero meaning your first attempt to roll a 5, you succeeded. Um, so that would be, well, let's let's uh, talk about this first in terms of P and Q. Well, if you roll a, a 5 right away, well, the probability of that is 1 6, which is P. So I'll put my P there, and then I'll just put 1 6 over here. Okay, now if as soon as I increase x equal to 1, that means the 1 represents we had one roll before we got a 5, so basically we had one failure followed by a success. So in terms of p and q, that would be q as our first roll and p as our second roll, and we multiply the probabilities. Um, so that would be uh, 5, 6 times. One six. I'm not going to actually calculate this. It's not really why I'm doing this. Uh, I just wanted to show you how this works. Um, and if we keep going, say we had two rolls before we got a five. So two non-fives before we got five. So that's basically two failures, two non-fives, followed by a five. So I can shorten this to, um, instead of just putting Q times Q, I'll put Q squared, so that would be 5, 6 squared times 1, 6. Um, I'll do a couple more. X equals 3, just to show the pattern. So this means I have three unsuccessful attempts to roll a 5. So that would be Q times Q times Q times P, or Q, Q cubed, Q to the power of 3. So 5, 6 to the power of 3 times 1, 6. And you can see the pattern here. You can always see that we have a 1 sixth as our last roll because we basically roll until we get a 5. And that probability of rolling a 5 is 1 sixth, the P. Um, and then we have any number of unsuccessful rolls before that, starting at 0, where we didn't roll anything other than the 5. Or here, where x equals 1, it means we had one unsuccessful attempt two unsuccessful attempts, three. So you can see the pattern here. Um, and it, it goes right back to this formula. Uh, so whatever your value for the uh, number of rolls before you get a five here is, it's going to be equal to, the probability is equal to Q to the power of that number, because that's we had that many unsuccessful rolls, multiplied by P, because we ended with rolling a five. OK, um, one more here. And this time, it's lot. It's four cues this time. So four non-five rolls to start, followed by a roll of five. So um, this is now five six to the power of four times one six. So hopefully you see the pattern here now. We have one six all the time. Uh, it never changes the power. It's always just you know to the power of one. Um, and then we can have any number of cues in front of that where that represents how many unsuccessful 
rows we had before we got a five and we can you know obviously rewrite that as a power of q which we have in the formula here okay now uh you know this can continue on forever because there's no upper limit as to how many rolls i take before i get a five um, so this actually goes on there's no end uh, so that that's what ma that's what makes this very unlike any other probability distribution uh, those probability distributions all have a finite number of values that the uh, uh, random variable can be whereas this does not so uh, that's something important now if i wanted to use this expected value of x uh, that's uh, that's going to be q over p so 5 6 over 1 6 is equal to 5 well what does that mean um, that actually tells you the expected number because remember x is the number of rolls be get before you get a 5 that it's expected that you would have to roll five times before you get a five okay um, so five rolls uh, expected before rolling a five okay so hopefully that shows you the uniqueness of this dis probability of distribution um, it is quite different and it is um, very related to binomial distribution because the uh, the trials are independent and they are based on success and failure so you got your P's and Q's just like we did with our uh, binomial so let's head into some more examples so these will all be word problems where we apply the geometric distribution for waiting time Okay, uh, example one. Jack shuffles a standard deck of cards and turns over the top card. He puts the card back into the deck and reshuffles. Okay, so anytime you pick a card, it goes right back in. So that, that confirms that in this case, it's going to be uh, independent trials because probabilities don't change as you draw cards. Um, if you didn't put the card back, you could not use this distribution just like you couldn't use the binomial distribution because uh, the, the probability of success or failure has to be the same in order to use both of them. Okay, he repeats this process of picking a card um, and putting it back until he gets a jack, which happens to be his favorite card. What is the probability that Jack finds a jack in three attempts or fewer? What is the expected number of attempts before Jack finds a jack? So. Our random variable is, remember, it's the number of failures before we get what we want. He wants to get a jack, so x is the number of cards uh, chosen before getting a jack. Okay, now the probability of drawing a jack, or get a jack, uh, that's, you know, there's four jacks in a deck of 52, so 4 over 52, that can be reduced to 1 over 13. So, um, we have to ask ourselves, okay, is that is that going to be our, our P or our Q in this case? So, we do want to get a jack, that's our goal, so that will be our P. So, our P value is 1 13th, and that makes our Q value 1 minus 1 13th, is 12 13ths. We add up to one. Okay, now this isn't asking for a specific number of attempts before you get a jack. It's saying that three attempts or fewer. So three attempts means it could be the worst case is you have two non jacks and then a jack. Okay, that would be three attempts or fewer. Two attempts would mean uh, non jack followed by a jack. And one attempt would mean um, just getting a jack right away. So if I'm writing this as a probability statement, uh, I want x. Uh, x has to be somewhere between 0. So the lowest value could be 0, and the highest value could be is 2. So remember, 
don't get mixed up with that three attempts or fewer because the third attempt will always be the success. The last attempt is always successful for this uh, for this uh, distribution. So uh, 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 an x value of zero means you got the jack first try. So you had no uh, no cards chosen before getting your jack. And the two would mean you had two cards before you get a jack, which means the third card's a jack. Okay. Now, I like to always start off if it's a range if it's a range of values of x, start it off with this inequality, um, and then decide how we're going to approach it. So in this case, um, basically we're looking for x equals zero, x equals one, and x equals two, which isn't a huge uh, task. It's just three calculations. Um, and basically it's our only option. We have to add each of those three. So we're going to take the probability of x being 0, x equals 0, plus the probability of x equals 1, plus the probability x equals 2. And that basically covers all the, the range of values of x here. And now we just use this. We're going to apply our formula, which is... Um, you remember, I'll just write it up here. Um, probability x equals some value is equal to uh, q to the power x, which is the little x times p. Okay, we already know what our p and q is, so it's just a matter of writing the formula. So probability x equals zero. Uh, that is just one thirteenth because uh, if x equals 0, then there's no q here at all. So it's just p, so 1 13th, plus, and don't, don't forget we're adding probabilities because it's, it's this or this or this. Okay, so we're adding, we're not multiplying. So probability x equals 1 means uh, we have one, uh, one unsuccessful uh, attempt. So that's 12 13ths probability, that's our q value and multiplied by our p-value because, remember, the last attempt, the, th the third attempt is, sorry, in this case it would be the second attempt is successful. And then lastly, x equals 2, uh, instead of having one unsuccessful uh, attempt, we have 2. So this is 12 thirteenths squared times 1 thirteenth. So again, just like the first page when we came up with our example, you always have the p. You always have the p probability as part of every calculation, and then you multiply that that p value by a power of q based on the number of times you you were unsuccessful in drawing what in getting what you wanted. So once we once we get that, then we just calculate these. I converted them to decimal just. So we could add them a little easier. I always put four decimals of precision, um, just to be as accurate as possible, especially when we round. Uh, zero seven one zero and uh, zero point zero six five five. So you can see the probability. So, so each one of these are meaningful. This is the probability that uh, you get a jack on your first attempt. Um, seven point six nine percent. Um, this would be you get a a jack on your second attempt. So yeah, your second attempt because you had one unsuccessful uh, attempt, and then this is on three attempts. So x equals two because you had two non jacks followed by a jack. So when I add these together, this works out to zero point two one three four. So that means that's uh. That's a combined percentage for x being between 0 and 2. So therefore, the probability of getting a jack in three attempts or less is 0 0.2134. Okay, so that's uh, that's our first real word problem. Hopefully that made sense to you. Let's try some more. This time we have the Monopoly game. 
Uh, so maybe some of you have played this. It's a pretty, pretty old game, but I think most families have this at their cottage or their house. But uh, one of the things that happens is sometimes you have to go to jail, which is the corner, one of the corners of the boards, and the only way you can get out is by rolling doubles or paying fifty dollars. Or you could also wait three turns. That's not in here, but it doesn't really apply to the question. Okay, uh, calculate the probability of getting out of jail in Monopoly in X rolls of the dice. All right, so how do we do this? So let's define what our random variable X is. So our goal is to roll doubles. So X is not how many doubles you get, like it is in the binomial distribution. It's how many rolls uh, how many unsuccessful rolls before you get a double? So number of unsuccessful rolls. Or non-double rolls. Uh, before getting a double. Okay, and it's very important to lay that out, especially for this one, because it's easy to get mixed up on what you're actually measuring. Okay, and, and this is the waiting time uh, distribution, so it's always got something to do with how long do you have to wait before you succeed, or something like that. Um, so we want to do the distribution here, so I'm going to do my table here, and I'm going to start left column will be my x value and then I'll have probability of getting that value. Okay, um, now I guess we have to figure out our p's and q's. Um, so we're trying to get a double, so what's the probability of getting a double with two dice? I mean you can get uh, double ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, and sixes. So that's six, uh, six outco outcomes where you get what you want out of a total of 36. So six over 36, that can be reduced to one six. So the probability of getting a double is one six. So that's your, that's your uh, P value because that's what we're trying to get, trying to get a double. So the probability of getting a double is one six. And therefore, Q is 1 minus 1, 6, or 5, 6. Okay, so uh, let's start off with 0, 1, 2, 3, and see where we go. I think I'll maybe give myself some room here. Okay, so probability, so a reminder of what the formula looks like. It is uh, q to the x times p. We know what p and q are. x is over here, so it's just a matter of plugging those three things in. So uh, probability of n no unsuccessful rolls before getting double means you've got a double right away. So that formula is q to the 0 times p. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so it's just p. So the probability of that is one sixth. Uh, the probability of one unsuccessful roll, well, that means you had a single P followed by, sorry, a single Q followed by a P. Um, let's, I'm going to put in the decimal values of the multiplication here. One, six, six, seven for the first one. And then one, three, eight, nine. 0 0.1389. Then if you had x equals 2, that means you had two non-doubles followed by a double. So that's q, which is 5, 6, probability of not rolling a double, times itself, because it happened twice, times getting a double. And that is 0 0.1157. And then 3, you can see the pattern. Hopefully you know how to do this now. 5, 6, Q, because you had five non-doubles followed by a double. And that's equal to 0 0.0965. Okay. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, one of the things that makes this formula so simple, if you remember the binomial 
formula, we had a combination in front, like uh, five, ch five choose two, something like that. Well, the thing about the geometric distribution is there's no, there's only a single pattern that works. It's always, um, so if you had three, if you had three, un three failures and a success, well, it has to happen as a failure, 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 success. Um, you have no other ways of arranging that. So that's why you don't see like a combination in front of here, because it's always going to be that one single pattern of Q times Q to a power times P. So you'll always have the P, and then you might have some uh, multiples of, not multiples, but some powers of, of the uh, Q. So, um, now, I think we've talked about this on the first page, but there's no end of this table. It can keep going on forever. So I'm just going to put like a dot, dot, dot. So it never really ends. And because it doesn't really end, um, normally if it did end, the sum of these probabilities would add up to 1. But in this case, it won't add up to 1. So the sum is not equal to 1. It'll be... It can be quite close, but it'll never actually get there, unlike the other distributions we've looked at. Okay, so there's our probability distribution. Um, you could, you know, you could easily put in a couple more rows, uh, rows to, to, to add to that. Um, the second part of it is what's the expected number of rows before getting out of jail. So, uh, in the past, what we've done is, well, before we knew our magic formulas. We actually did x times p of x as the third column here, and that was like a weighted average. And then we we added that up, and that was our expected value. Um, well, even if you wanted to do that here, you can't because, like, like I said earlier, this uh, distribution does not end, uh, unlike the other ones. So you can't even do that long formula, even if you wanted to, which I can't see you would, because there's a nice easy new formula for uh, geometric expected value, and that's going to be Q over P, which for us, that's 5, 6 over 1, 6, which simplifies to 5. So what does that mean? Therefore, the expected number of rolls before getting a double is five. So that means you have, so, so it does say before getting a double. So you'd have, on average, you'd have five non-doubles followed by a double. Okay. Let's keep going here. All right, this is a pretty standard question. I like this because it's simple. There's not, you know, too many, uh, too many numbers here to confuse you, but, uh, it's kind of an interesting question. Uh, Jamal has a success rate of 68% for scoring on free throws in basketball. What is the expected waiting time before he misses the basket on a free throw? So actually the only number is 68%. I thought there was two, but there's just that. So um, let's work our way through this. Okay, so x are random variable. Is the number of free throws. Now, we have to get this straight in our head. Um, so, in this example, it says number of misses. What is the expected number of, mi of misses? Uh, sorry. Uh, what's the expected waiting time before he misses the basket on a free throw? So in this example, uh, basically he's going to have some sequence of success where he's making free throws and then he's going to fail. He's going to miss the free throw. So we, this is kind of backwards to what the other questions have, have been about because on the other questions, uh, what we're trying to do 
uh, we consider to be a success. But in this case, what we're trying to do is sort of get a failure here missing, because that's the that's what will end the uh, you know the the free throw trials. Okay, so whatever happens here, this is going to be our this has to be our uh, this has to be our p value, and this has to be the probabilities of this will be our q value. So it almost goes contrary to intuition here. So you have to really think about it. So we're going to end with missing the free throw. So that's considered our, our P, our success. So um, so it's, it said we have a, a success rate of 68%. So that's that would be for this. So that tells you that Q is equal to 0.68. And therefore P is equal to 0 0.32, 1 minus 0.68. Uh, so let me finish this off. Number of free throws before Jamal misses. He, I'll put he so I can fit this in. Okay, so you have to be very careful with this because obviously if you get the wrong P and Q value, it'll throw everything off. Um, so in this question, we don't have to do a distribution table. Uh, sorry, um, probability distribution. We just have to... Uh, come up with the expected waiting time. So that's just using our old friend e, e of x. So that's going to be q over p, which uh, was 0.68 over 0.32, which is equal to 2.1. <clears throat> so that tells you that uh, uh, in most cases, on average case, uh, Jamal would would make 2.1 free throws uh, before he misses one. So obviously he's not going to. We're not going to be making 0.1 of a free throw, but this this is an average. So um, somewhere between two and three successful free throws before he misses one. So let's wrap this up. Therefore, it is expected that Jamal. will make his first 2.1 baskets before missing. Okay. Now, if you did accidentally mix the P and the Q up, what would happen here was instead of getting 0.68 over 0.32, you get the reciprocal. And that would be about a half. So uh, your answer would be saying he would. It's expected he'd make 0.5 baskets before missing. And based on the uh, his uh, six, well, his rate of making baskets of 68 percent, that that seems obviously wrong. So if you use your common sense, if you switch the Q and the P, um, hopefully, hopefully your intuition slash common sense would direct you to go back and correct those two values. Okay, example four, suppose Max owns a light bulb manufacturing company, determines that three out of every 75 light bulbs are defective. Determine the expected number of light bulbs inspected before Max finds his first defective light bulb. Okay, so our X variable is the number of so we want to find the number of good or non-defective light bulbs picked <clears throat> before getting a defective one. Before getting a defective light bulb. And the probability of getting a defective light bulb that based on the data that was given three out of every 75 are defective so three over 75 that could be reduced to one over 25 which can be changed into a nice decimal not rounded of 0 0.04 
<clears throat> so now we have to figure out, is that our P or is that our Q? So if you think about it, what we're trying to figure out here is how many good light bulbs are picked before you get a bad one. And this is the probability of getting a bad one. This is what happens ha has to happen last. So there's a whole string of uh, the other probability before we get to this one at the end. So this has to, ha has to be our P. Okay, so our p-value is 0 0.04, and our q-value is 0 0.96. So this is opposite again to your your thinking because you you you're sort of thinking that a good light bulb is a success, um, but in the context of this question, the, um, the success is what happens at the end, and that would be finding a defective light bulb. Okay, so the whole uh, failure success thing, you have to really uh, focus on that. So now that we've got those values uh, pretty much set up correctly, we do our expected value, which is what the question asked. Q over P, so that's 0 0.96 over 0 0.04, and that works out exactly to 24. <clears throat> so therefore, we would expect max to inspect twenty four light bulbs before his first effective light bulb. Okay, so that means he'd get 24 uh, good light bulbs followed by a defective one. So notice the word before. He would inspect 24 before getting his first defective light bulb. You could also word it as um, he would inspect 20, a total of 25 light bulbs uh, to reach uh, to get his first effective light bulb, but uh, this is a safer way of doing it. How, how many did you have to inspect before you got the one that you didn't or did want to get? Okay, so let's uh, move on to our last two examples. All right, uh, example five, Green Party. Uh, the current polls for the Green Party of Canada show that 8% of Canadians would vote, vote for them. <clears throat> if a random poll of Canadians were uh, was conducted, uh, what's the probability that the fifth person polled is the first person polled who would vote for the Green Party? In other words, you get four people who wouldn't vote for them, followed by one that would. Um, and then secondly, how many people would be expected to be polled before finding someone who would, be, who would vote for the Green Party? Okay, so... Let's define our random variable x. x is the number of people polled. Before finding a Green Party supporter. Okay, so the probability of finding a of Finding someone who supports the Green Party is 8%, and that, that's what we want to happen at the end. So I think we can put that in right away. So the P is a success in both contexts now. So that's going to be 0 0.08, and our Q value will be 1 minus that, so 0 0.92. So basically 92% of people uh, don't support the Green Party. <clears throat> So this is a two-part question, so let's make sure we do this one. What's the probability that the fifth person polled is the first person uh, polled who would vote for the Green Party? So if the fifth person votes, uh, supports the Green Party, that means the first four didn't. That means x equals 4. So we're doing probability x equals 4. Um, 
and that's equal to, that's going to be Q. Uh, so Q is 0 0.92 to the power 4 times 0 0.08. Okay, and that's going to be, that's actually equal to 0 0.0573. Um, so that means, therefore, uh, probability that... Uh, fifth person uh, picked is the first Green Party supporter is 0 0.0573 so that's a little over 5% okay um, so the second part is asking uh, what is the expected number of people uh, polled before finding someone who would vote for the Green Party? So this is your E of X value. So that's uh, Q over P. So plugging those in, we get our 0 0.92 over 0 0.08. That is equal to 11.5. Therefore, 11.5 people... would be expected to be pulled. Before finding a Green Party supporter. So again, that means uh, on average, you'd pick, uh, you'd uh, poll 11.5 people first who would be not supporting the Green Party before you find one that is, okay? So that's not one in 11.5, it's really uh, the first one is after those non-supporters were polled. Okay, last question. Uh, suppose that an intersection you pass on your way to school has a has a traffic light that is green for 40 seconds and then amber or red for a total of 60 seconds. What is the probability that the light will be green when you reach the intersection at least once a week? Okay. What is the expected number of days before the light is green uh, when you reach the intersection? Okay. So the first thing is, and this is a kind of hidden, it says a week, but it's about driving to school. Okay, so instead of uh, being seven days, it's actually five days in a week. It's a work week, school week. Um, so that's important. Now, we also, it's got the probability of uh, getting a green light. We could, we could do either one here, uh, but a green light's 40 seconds out of a total of 100. So probability of arriving at a green light is 40 over 100, which is uh, 0 0.4. Okay. Uh, and that is our goal. So, because uh, when is the, what? sorry, what is the probability that the light will be green when you reach the intersection at least once a week? So that will be our P value. And our Q value will be 0 0.6. So it is more likely to be red than green, or red or yellow than green. Um, so x, our variable x, is the number of days that the traffic light will be red uh, before being green. 
So again, this is the waiting time. You're waiting for the light to be green. How long, how many days do you have to wait until you arrive at the green light? Okay, so again, um, it says what's the probably the light will be green uh, at least once a week. So that's basically as long as you get a green light in those five days, okay, then that's the probability we're looking for. So in, in terms of waiting time, um, if we got a green light on the first day, our X value would be zero. And if we got a green light on the fifth day, our X value would be four because we waited four days before we got the green light. We had four reds followed by a green. So our probability that we're looking for is X is between zero and four. Talking about number of days of red lights before we get the green light. So again, uh, we're gonna break this into four different, uh, sorry, five different probabilities. Uh, probability X equals zero plus probability X equals one plus probability x equals two, keep going, x equals three, x equals four, and finally x equals, oh sorry, that was it. Just wanted to keep going there. But it's uh, four days of waiting before we get the, the uh, green light on the Friday. Okay, so let's calculate this, give, give ourselves some room here. So if it's px equals zero, remember it's uh, that would just be uh, the p value. So that's uh, zero point four. There's no multi multiplication with the q value because we didn't have to wait. And then if x equals one, then it's point uh, six times point four. We had one day of red followed by a day of green, and we keep going. We just keep multiplying by another 0.6 each time because we had to wait one more day than the last time. Uh, 0.6 cubed, so that's x equals 3 times 0.4 and then finally 0.6 to the power of 4 times 0.4 and now we just multiply these out so I get 0.4 plus 0.24 plus 0 0.144. You can see the probabilities are decreasing as we go, uh, plus 0 0.0864, plus finally 0 0.5184. Oh, that should be zero. Yeah, so that, that should be a zero in there. If we add all those up, we get 0 0.9224. And that's the probability that we'll get a green light at least once a week when we're driving to school. So let's put that in words. Therefore, there is, this time we'll change it to percent because it looks higher, 92.24%. Uh, probability um, that the light will be <clears throat> green at least one at least once during the school week. Okay, so I think that's enough of the examples. Hopefully you got a good idea of what this distribution is like. It's a bit, it's a bit of a strange one, I'll be honest. Um, but it does give you some interest, interesting insights into, um, into statistics that you probably wouldn't think of. Um, so instead of it being how many times can something happen, it's how long do you have to wait for something to happen. So it's just a different twist on it's a it's a different twist on the binomial uh, distribution instead of looking at how many what's the probability of getting something happening so many times it's probability of having to wait so long to get that happening okay so we've got some uh, homework questions 
So please try them out. Um, the next lesson, uh, lesson four, is um, it's called the hypergeometric distribution, but in reality, it uh, you'd think geometric and hypergeometric would have something to do with each other, but they really don't. Um, this has this is a lot like the binomial distribution, except the trials are not independent, meaning they are dependent. So uh, that that'll be an interesting uh, calculation or probability distribution that we'll be looking at next. And that will wrap up the unit once we're done that. Um, so it's a fairly quick unit, but it's kind of intense with the, uh, the different distributions and when you use them and how you use them. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you have a great day. See you on the next lesson.